Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Defining Moments this morning. We just are delighted to have you here. As you can hear, I have a room full of beautiful ladies with me today, and we're all just getting settled in here and getting ready to come and just share a word with you today that hopefully is going to transform your prayer life. You know, we... um most everybody knows what prayer is prayer is just simply talking to god just like you talk to your your husband or your wife or your children well you know maybe not like we talk to our children sometimes but just talking to somebody and that's what prayer is it's communion with god and that's that's going to be the thrust of our program today is just to help you have a more effective prayer life and if you know somebody that's a recent uh, born again Christian and they need to know how to pray and maybe they say I can't pray because I don't know how then I ask you just to go and and get the phone and call and invite them to come in and turn the radio up a little and just listen over the next uh, few moments as, as to what we're going to share with you and you know we are just delighted that you have taken time to to join us today and if you want to connect with us just you know feel free to send us an email at lynnteamministries at aol.com and i'll uh, be sure to get back with you or visit our page on facebook defining moments radio station and we're also on youtube and you can find us by searching for defining moments with evangelist lynn taylor now I want to let you know this program is not about me. Uh, that just was a simple way to put it on there so that you could find it easily and have some uh, way to easily connect. But this program is about the Lord Jesus Christ. It is about bringing other women to the forefront to have a place for them to share their testimony, their story, or their word that the Lord has given them to share. And there's so many that don't have that. But we don't want you to have any excuse not to be able for your voice to be heard. So this program is for you. And it won't cost you a dime. All it will take is for you to buy the gas and come. And, you know, sometimes we even meet up. And uh, since we are pre-recorded, we even meet up and we have lunch together and have a little time of fellowship. And that's always a beautiful time in the Lord. And I just encourage you today, allow God to flow through you. Allow him to minister to you. And, and I, I have uh, three beautiful sisters in the Lord with me today. There'll be four of us sharing together. Uh, we have Beth Rogers, Jane Anderson, and Glenda Halsey. Now, they've all been on the program previously, and their uh, testimonies or their word is on YouTube, and you can find them there. But today, I've asked them to join me because these are women of powerful prayer lives. These are women that know what it means to touch God, and they know what it is to help you learn how to pray and they have been inspirational in my life i would not be here without them and their prayers and so you know i just am so thankful that we can connect together and connect with you and help you as you learn how to pray and and today our topic we're just simply going to talk about spiritual warfare and i know a lot of people have been in warfare and i just felt the, that the holy spirit would have us come together today and just share and we're hoping to that this maybe will even carry on into a program for next week and but we're just going to allow the holy spirit to have his way and before we begin i want us to do that i want us to go to the lord in prayer and i want to ask these ladies to join with me and let's pray together father we just thank you for this time in your presence we thank you that we can come to these uh listeners lord by way of radio and that you can speak to them and we ask you to heal the sick that are listening we ask you to cause the prodigals to come home lord father we just ask you that each person that needs a miracle will see that miracle miracle come to pass in their life we pray that you will heal marriages that you restore and make it better than ever before lord we pray for jobs and we pray for financial miracles to come to pass in the lives of these that need it lord father we just pray for those whose children have been uh, wounded and hurt by 
others that lord that you will help us know how to minister to our kids lord any situation where there's abuse or or turmoil or bullying or anything of that nature god we just ask you to speak peace into that storm and lord bring healing to every situation in every life touch those that are in nursing homes or assisted livings or are in the hospitals wherever they may be or in the jails or in the prisons we ask you that you would penetrate the walls lord and that you will go into their place of darkness and you will be the light that shows them the way lord and we just thank you and we bless you and we glorify your name for it now praise the lord we just we just believe that he is touching people even now and you know i was telling you that the topic of our program today is going to be about spiritual warfare and I wanted just to begin with uh, a scripture that I was uh, drawn to. And it's in Ephes- uh, Ephesians, um, I'm sorry, it's in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 8. And it simply says, you know, this is a famous uh, chapter in the Bible about there's a time to be born and a time to die. Well, down toward the end of that, you'll see where it says there is a time for war and a time for peace. And there's times of rest in our spiritual walk. There's times of refreshing, times to withdraw from the front lines and regroup, times to be alone with the Father and gain new insight about the battle, to dig in and unveil the enemy's strategies and and know how to go back and fight and be stronger. But then there are the times of war where you've got to fight the enemy for what it is you want. Well, you have to fight to protect what is rightfully yours. And and today, this is what we're going to be talking about, is spiritual warfare. See, you have an enemy. His name is Satan, and his objective is to deceive you and lead you to destruction. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, be self-controlled, be alert. Your enemy, the devil, he names him. He prowls around like a lion looking for someone to devour or to eat up. So God has has given us a tool or a weapon to use called prayer. And there there are different ways of praying. But today, we're just going to simply talk about uh, spiritual warfare. And I've introduced my guests, and I just, you know, I'm so thankful that they've come because I know these women, they've done spiritual warfare. And I'm going to ask them to come and join me in just a moment. But before we do, I just want to read a few scriptures to you to kind of lay a foundation for what we're going to be talking about today. And the first one, you're going to find it in in Ephesians, and it's going to be, chapter 6 and we're going to begin reading at verse 10 he said finally be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the full armor of god so that you can stand and stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against rulers against authorities against the powers of the dark world against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms therefore put on the whole armor of god so that when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything else to stand stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist the breastplate of righteousness in place with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace and in addition take up the shield of faith which with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and there's um this armor of God that he's talking about here. And as I was putting some things together, uh, I began to think about this, and the Lord began to show me three different things that we need in in order to have an effective prayer life. And I was sharing with uh, my sisters just a few moments ago, and the first one is that we must realize that our strength comes from the mighty power of God working in us. And the second is you have to put on this army, armor, and as you put it on, what you're saying to yourself is, I am a warrior in the army of God. When a fireman puts on his fireman suit, it's reminding him that he's not wearing a pair of jeans and a pair of tennis shoes about to go to the ball game. It's saying, I'm about to go to a fire. 
and I am a fireman, and I have been prepared, and I have been taught how to handle this fire. And when you get up and you put on that armor of God, you're reminding yourself that you are in the army of God. And third, you must know your enemy. He says who our enemy is. And our enemy is not flesh and blood. You know, sometimes I was telling them, sometimes we we think, you know, it looks like our enemy is flesh and blood. But it's not. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. But our enemy is the devil. And I want to read another scripture to you. And it's going to be found over in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. He says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The, wor- the, the world rages war in, in the flesh. He says, But on the contrary, we have divine power that will demolish strongholds. Now, there are strongholds in people's lives. There's probably strongholds in your life. But he's telling us that we have weapons that are mighty through him. When we realize who he is, we realize what we're doing, we realize who our enemy is, we have power in that to pull down strongholds. You say, well, what are some of the strongholds? Well, let me read them real quick. He says, to, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So some of those things are the flesh, our thought process, the things that come into our mind. You know, how many times have you known you're delivered and been set free? But how many times are you just maybe sitting around in your living area and boom, these thoughts just come invading your mind? Pow, there they are. Those are weapons of warfare that the enemy is using against you. Ladies, y'all, y'all have something y'all want to share. I mean, things where the enemy just comes in against your mind. You know, one thing I was thinking about, and um, this was Beth, and, and she was sharing with me, and we were talking one day about sweeping these things out of our lives. And, you know, I just want her to come and, and share that. But before she does, I want to read you read you this scripture. I want to make sure that all of this that you are hearing today, you're going to have scripture to back it up. And it's in Matthew 12 and verse 43. It says, When an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through a place seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, Well, I'll return to the house I left. And when it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. And it goes and it takes back with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they go in and they live there and the final condition of the man is worse than the first that is how it will be with this wicked generation and you know when um we were talking about sweeping the house clean we were talking about you know you can sweep it clean but you got to put something back in there don't you beth you got to put something back in there so you share that well, I've had a couple of instances with family members who were going through rough things. My One of my brothers uh, is going through a divorce, and he's living with my mom, and they've had trouble. The kids come in, and they act ugly. and I mean, more than just being young teenagers, they just, you can tell there's something not right. And so I told my mom, I said, I think we need to sweep your house out. And so I reminded her that just like she has the authority to say who can come in and out of her house in a physical sense, mm-hmm. she also has the right to say what can come in and out of her house in a spiritual sense. I want you to say that again. She has the what? The right. I the mean, right. it's her authority. It's just like she has a house key that mm-hmm. she can lock the house and keep those people out that don't belong mm-hmm. in. She also has the right to say what can come in and out of her house. I think and so. Right. Lee I, and I, I yeah. and Mama, one day we just... we. First of all, we took some olive oil and Mm -hmm. we anointed every door and every window where something could gain access. Mm -hmm. And we anointed those doors and windows. And then I told Mama, I said, now, Mama, it's your, this is your house. I mean, of course, we're welcome here, but this is your house. And if you don't want anything in your house, you and Lee need to sweep it out. So Mm -hmm. they swept and then we prayed over the house. And, of course, we didn't let him go out the front door. We made him go out the back door. All right. We opened the back door. (laughs) He didn't have the right to the front door. (laughs) <laughs> and we swept it real good, and then we prayed. And we've had to do it another time or two because it's like anything else. Sometimes things come in mm-hmm, on, come people's, mm-hmm. on people's coattails. Yeah, that's true. But we also prayed, and I told Mama, I said, now when you see somebody sitting in this house and they're fidgeting 
and they're not comfortable, I said that's because this prayer that we prayed has made them uncomfortable, mm-hmm. and they don't have any business in here because they're bringing Because you and I both know people, they can bring in strife, they can bring in Absolutely. division. And so we didn't want anything right. like that, and we've seen a marked difference in how the children are. They're still going through a lot, and mm-hmm. Lee is too, and Mom is too. But we've seen a marked difference, and I've done it with a couple of other family members and friends. And I know that it makes a difference. It, it does. Makes a difference. Yeah. It really mm-hmm. does. And we can we can bring things in on ourselves, we like sure especially if right. if a spouse is working and they've had a hard day, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and that hard day comes home with them, right. and they bring it home, and the next thing you know. You were you were fine, and then all of a sudden it's like something drops out of the sky, and you're both mm-hmm. just yeah yeah at each other, and you right. have to stop and say, "Where'd this come from?" Exactly. And to do like your you told your mama, say, "Hey, this is my house. Mm-hmm. I have authority here. You don't have authority here. You know you need to you need to hit the road, Jack." Right. And one thing that I've read and and or heard that just really changed my perspective on being afraid of the devil. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I I was bound by spirit of fear. I I was. That was really, really bad. But one of the things that delivered me was a word I heard that said the devil has presence, but he has no power. Mm -hmm. And the only power he has, Mm -hmm. see, the devil lives off of fear. Right. Mm -hmm. He he thrives off of fear. And just like when when we pray, and we're going to get to this in in a moment, when we pray then we are fueling the fight that is going on in the spirit realm mm-hmm. for our for our answer mm-hmm. but when we fear we're fueling the, the the tool the enemy uses against mm-hmm. us it's like throwing gas on a fire and he can move in for the kill and so when i learned that the only power he has is the power i give him to right. feed off of mm-hmm. my fear that's right then i no longer have to be afraid and i can stand in the power and authority given to me but i had to take that authority just like and and that's something i've had to (coughs) encourage my mom she is very tiny but i've told her i said mama sometimes you just have to plant your feet and make yourself as big as possible and just take dominion and say nope this is not going to go on in my house Mm -hmm. these things are not going to happen in my house Mm -hmm. and you know it doesn't matter how little you are Mm -hmm. if the lord's behind you you're big that's right Mm -hmm. Uh, I was coming home the other day, and, you know, I'm, I don't consider myself a teeny tiny person, but I'm not a great big person either. But um, I was coming home the other day from getting my granddaughter, and I may have shared this with some of you. And uh, I just felt this spirit come in the car, and it was that old spirit of fear mm-hmm. that tried to come in and started trying to plant seeds of doubt. And uh, See, that happens to all of us. It's not just one or two people. It happens mm-hmm. to all of us. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm thinking, oh no, I'm not. I am not going to go through this again. I, I've spent a, wasted enough time on feeding the devil, you know, fear. And all of a sudden, I felt like somebody just—I I don't know how to describe it other than to say it like a cartoon, like how these cartoon characters will reach in one another's mouth and pull their tongue out, kind of, mm-hmm. and you know, or sometimes pull each other wrong side out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a I'm a cartoon. I learn everything I know from Bugs Bunny. But anyway, <laughs> you know, it felt like somebody literally ran their hand down my throat and pulled my spirit up. Mm-hmm. And when it did, I felt like like you were telling your mama. I felt like I got bigger. Mm-hmm. I felt like I just became a bigger person, and all of that just left because, you know, he was there, and and that spiritual warfare was going on, and I was thinking about. Uh, the scripture in Isaiah and I want to read that real quick it's Isaiah 54 and 7 and um, 17 I'm sorry he says no weapon forged against you will prevail now I'm going to just read that portion right there and I'll stop so you know no weapon forged against you that that lets me know weapons are going to forge right right, Glenda that's right Uh, weapons are going to forge against us and as Beth and I were talking what the enemy sees that he can use against yep. her might not work on me. Right. Might not work on her. Might not work on Glenda. We all teasing are teasing Glenda because she loves to eat. Well, Glenda is about as big around as your little finger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, she's tiny. And and she can just eat, 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 and it, and it doesn't show up. Or I don't know, she may have big feet. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I can look at something and gain five pounds. But, you know... We were thinking if, if Glenda were to go on a fast, a weapon of warfare for her could be the enemy putting something really scrumptious in front of her and her having to overcome that temptation mm-hmm. to want to eat that. Where if I go on a fast, 
it might not bother me. I'm not going to say it wouldn't, but I'm just saying he uses different tactics. Mm -hmm. So, Glenda, come around and share. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was awesome. <coughs> uh, I just want to uh, tell you that uh, God has taught me, and I believe he's taken me to another level in spiritual warfare. Uh, I remember Moses and Aaron, how they spoke to Pharaoh and told them to let my people go. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord showed me through that. And I, my sister and I would get together and pray. And I told my sister, I said, this is how the Lord is telling me how to pray and, uh, and to do spiritual warfare. Whatever... Whatever the spirit is that's attacking you or somebody else. For instance, if I see a spirit of anger, mm -hmm. just say in Sister Lynn, which mm -hmm. is not true, I call that spirit out as it is. Mm -hmm. I speak to you, spirit of anger. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. I take authority in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Spirit of anger has to go. Amen. You Amen. cannot reside in Sister Lynn's body Amen. or mind Amen. or spirit. I take authority over it you in the goes, name of Jesus. It all goes back to taking authority. Yes, authority. yes. And the Lord showed me, and I, w I have to use my finger pointing mm -hmm. at it whether I saw it or not. Mm -hmm. I would point my finger at it, and I'd shake my finger at the devil. Mm -hmm. Jane can tell you. And I, I just call it out, you know. It, it can be jealousy, pride, envy, strife, bitterness, hatred, all kinds of mm -hmm. bad, evil spirits that torments God's saints. Right. And, and we have to take that authority. We have to stand on his word. And God is just showing me how to take more authority. We have, uh, greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. And we can take that authority if we mean it, but we've got to take it forcibly and we've got to mean it when we say it we got to and we got to speak it loud so the devil can hear it he has no choice but to go in the amen. name of jesus amen right. well I, it's kind of like going back to what the lord showed me earlier know who your enemy yeah, is exactly. right That's know right. who it is uh, okay right. spirit of anger mm -hmm. or, or you know i believe that um I, some people may may not agree with me, but I believe mm -hmm. divorce comes mm -hmm. because of spirits that are entertained. Mm -hmm. exactly. Whether it's a spirit of anger, yeah. whether it's a spirit of um, mm -hmm. greed, they mm -hmm. fight people fighting over money. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a spirit of lust, mm -hmm. people being drawn away, mm -hmm. and and these things, wow. if if the person that really wants this marriage to stay mm -hmm. intact, right. really wants this marriage to work, if we can get a a grasp on just where the root is mm -hmm. and trigger and, and, and center in on that and it's kind of just pounding on it over and over and over again in the spirit and in the right. spirit realm right. in that spiritual warfare sooner or later something's right. going to break right. now do I mean that marriage is going to be fixed I can't guarantee you that right. but something's going to change somewhere yes. it may only change in you but something right. somewhere is going to change yes. Yes. so I yes. think that's one key is Knowing who yes. our enemy is. Yes. Jane, you got something to add to all that? Uh, <laughs> yes, I just know uh, we could go through devastations in our lives mm -hmm. and God can plant our feet and we're amazed at ourselves when we grab a hold of the power of God that's Amen. within us. As, as we <laughs> said a while ago, greater, the greater one lives inside of us. Right. Well, when we grab a hold of everything that God has for that's us right. in prayer, we can on, on set the enemy. We can throw him to where he belongs because we are his priest. We are the, we are the priest of God. You're his child. And, and nothing by any means can hurt you or harm you. That devil of fear has just about in my life destroyed my life. But mm -hmm. he didn't. Amen. You know what? Because God saw a bigger day for Jane Anderson. Amen. He saw a bigger time. He saw me to get with prayer warriors like you, Sister Lynn, and, and you, and, and you, and all of us together, Sister Beth and Glenda. He saw a time that we were going to get together and war for the king's children. Amen. And war for the uh, uh, ones that don't know the Lord. Amen. And uh, we, we are his, his children that we can 
fight the battle. But we have to remember, to remember the good things that God has done for us in times past. Mm -hmm. In times past, where he brought you from, know that you did not do it yourself. That's we right. did not do a thing ourselves. That's right. It was all under the power and the authorities of the living God. That's right. I am one that can tell you today, I, I don't mean to get excited, more, but you know when we live for Jesus, we do get excited. Amen, we do. And uh, we just have to know know who we are and take our stand against the evil forces and mainly the uh, spirit of fear that's trying to attack the world today. That spirit of fear, if you allow it, it will take you in another direction, far from God. Mm -hmm. But stand your ground, my child, my brother, my sister, my grandchildren, my son. Stand your ground Amen. of the fear, and he will leave you. That's right. Amen. And, and, and you know, that's kind of that's kind of been a, 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 a something we really touched on here today, is overcoming fear. And, you know... Whenever uh, a subject goes into the king, they go in afraid. They go in, you know, it, it reminds me back of when uh, Queen Esther was going in to the king and, and going to make her petition, and he had not called for her. And somebody's like, hey, you know what? You could lose your head for this. But we have a high priest that is approachable. We have a high priest that we don't have to be afraid when we go into his presence. My goodness, he even says, come boldly before the throne of grace. Do that mean come in there saying, I'm all this, I'm all that? No, that means approach him with the confidence that what you're asking, he wants to do. Be bold. Go in there. Well, if, if I were to call my earthly daddy today and say, Daddy, I need 20 bucks. You know what he'd say? Hey, if I got it, it's yours. I don't have to go in there trembling and shaking and saying, Oh, you know, he may be angry if I ask him for 20 bucks or whatever. No. I go with confidence knowing, hey, my dad's got, he may not have but $20, but if this girl needs it, he's going to say, Baby, you get whatever you need. You know, and our Heavenly Father is so much more that way. And so in prayer and in approaching prayer, first and, most, first and far more than anything else, approach him knowing that it's his desire to give you what you're asking for. There's spiritual warfare going on all around us. Spirits and things happening in the realm, uh, in a realm of reality. It's not some make-believe world out there. If the Lord were to open our eyes and allow us to see what's going on around us, We'd probably be like the man we're going to talk about next week. We'd probably be like Daniel. We would fall down trembling because of the greatness of God and the things that he is doing and allowing us to see. Now, I don't want you to feel like we didn't cover everything today because we're going to come back to you next week and we're going to pick up where we left off. And we're going to center in more on this spiritual warfare because we want you to be an effective prayer warrior because the word says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much and we want you to know that the thrust of this entire program is for you to know that when you realize just how much Jesus Christ loves you you will experience your greatest defining moment <laughs>